Hello and welcome to the MSUM Planetarium and happy Valentine's Day. My name is Abby, I am a student presenter at MSUM, and today I will be showing you how to find some constellations in the February night sky. I will be showing you how to find some of the most famous and easy to recognize stars and constellations, which will hopefully prove useful to you on future date nights. Right now we are facing south and watching the sun make its way across the sky to set in the west. The sun is our daytime star and gives us light and heat, but I think the nighttime sky is the real star of the show. So let's watch as the sun sets below the horizon and the stars come out. Now that we have a good view of the night sky, we can start looking for some shapes in the stars. Right now we are facing south, but some of the better known and easier to find constellations are in the north. So I'm going to turn the sky around so that we can start with those. As we are facing north, we are looking at what is called the circumpolar sky. In the northern hemisphere, certain stars and constellations will always be visible and will never set below the horizon. So you can see these stars and constellations all year round. Other stars and constellations will appear to rise and set below the horizon. We refer to those as seasonal stars and constellations. The most famous shape in the circumpolar sky has to be the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is made up of seven bright stars that make a scoop shape. So you've got the scoop and the three stars here for the handle. So it's kind of like a big spoon or ladle. The Big Dipper is not actually an official constellation. It's something called an asterism, which is like a constellation, but a little bit less official. The main role of asterisms is to help point you towards stars and constellations in the sky. The Big Dipper is part of a constellation called Ursa Major, or the Big Bear. So we can draw out the Big Dipper again. For Ursa Major, we imagine that these stars make up the tail of the bear. Then we have three stars along the back of the bear. Three stars that make up a triangle-shaped head. Three stars for the front leg. Stars along the belly. And then three stars for the back leg. So that is Ursa Major, or the big bear. So if you've heard of the Big Dipper, you've probably also heard of the Little Dipper. We can use the Big Dipper to help point us toward the Little Dipper. So we draw out the Big Dipper again. We use these two stars in the cup, which names are Mirak and Dube. Mirak and Dube will point in a line to this star, which is called Polaris commonly called the North Star, but its official astronomical name is Polaris. And Polaris is the tip of the tail of the Little Dipper. The Little Dipper is the name of the asterism. The official name is Ursa Minor. So we have Ursa Major, the Big Bear, and Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. And the Big Dipper is quite useful in the circumpolar sky because it can help us point toward two other constellations. We'll start by finding Cassiopeia. So we find the Big Dipper, our pointer stars Mirac and Dube. We'll draw a line between them, get to Polaris, and keep going until we reach this zigzag of stars making an M shape. That is the constellation Cassiopeia the Queen. The stars of Cassiopeia are quite bright, and you can see them even if you're in town. So we have Cassiopeia the Queen, and we also have Cepheus the King. At the MSUM Planetarium, we often say that Cepheus lives in a house. So we can find Cepheus by looking partway between Polaris and Cassiopeia. So we imagine we're on our way to Cassiopeia, we encounter this star, and then we find a house shape. So we have a triangle-shaped roof and a square-shaped base. 
That is the constellation Cepheus, the king. The last constellation we'll look at in the circumpolar sky we are quite fond of here at MSUM because that is Draco the dragon. So you can use the Big Dipper again to help us find Draco. There are a couple different ways to find him. First, we can imagine that the Big Dipper is scooping across the sky and it would be scooping up one of these stars, which is the tail of Draco the dragon. Draco is a snaky kind of dragon. He snakes in between Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, and then his head is this trapezoid shape close to the horizon. So that is finding Draco by the tip of his tail. You can also find Draco by returning again to the Big Dipper, finding Polaris, and then dropping down towards the horizon, you can find the trapezoid-shaped head of Draco, and then see him snaking in between Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. So these are the constellation lines, but we also have some art for these constellations that maybe makes them look a little bit more like what I said they were. So we have the bears, the king and queen, and our dragon. Now that we've found some of the most famous constellations in the circumpolar sky, we're going to turn around and face south to look at the winter sky. The most famous winter constellation has to be Orion. And you can find Orion by first looking for these three bright stars that make up his belt. And you can find two shoulders and two legs. This is the most simple drawing of Orion you could do. You can also include his shield and his club. So that is Orion. In Greek mythology, Orion was a great hunter, so he must be hunting some things in the sky. One of the things he might be hunting is right at his feet, which is Lepus the rabbit. You can find Lepus by looking for an Easter egg shape, kind of like the Easter bunny and no good rabbit is complete without his ears. So that is Lepus the rabbit. And Orion is not alone in his great hunting expedition. He also has two hunting dogs to help him, Canis Major and Canis Minor. We'll start by finding Canis Major. And the belt of Orion can kind of help point us toward Canis Major. So if we follow the line of the belt, We'll get to the head of Canis Major and this bright star, which is called Sirius. And we can draw kind of a dog shape with a front leg, a back, a back leg, and a tail. So that is Canis Major, or the big dog. And in his collar is the star Sirius. And then we can also find Canis Minor. To find Canis Minor, we can kind of imagine forming a curve between Orion and Canis Major and curving up to get to this bright star, which is called Procyon. And Canis Minor is made up of only two stars, so it's kind of more like a hot dog. So this bright star Procyon and the bright star Sirius were the names of Orion's hunting dogs. From Canis Minor, we can find Gemini, or the twins, so we'll curve up from Procyon to get to these two bright stars, which names are Castor and Pollux. And the lines for Gemini can be a little complicated, so I will show you a simplified version, which looks like a horseshoe shape. So we have one side here. And we can imagine this twin's foot is standing on top of the Milky Way. So that's Pollux, and then we have Castor and he is dipping his toe into the Milky Way. So we make this horseshoe shape for the constellation Gemini. And from Gemini, we can find the constellation Taurus. And Taurus is a V shape. We'll follow Castor's foot dipping into the Milky Way and get to this V shape of stars. So we have these long horns poking into the Milky Way and this smaller V making up the snout of Taurus. 
And this reddish star is the star Aldebaran, which is kind of like Taurus's angry red eye. And there's a smudge of stars behind the snout, which is called the Hyades star cluster. So you can imagine that the Hyades are hiding behind the snout of Taurus. And you might have also noticed this little cluster of stars, which is called the Pleiades star cluster. And the arrangement of the, these stars might be familiar to you if you drive a Subaru, because in Japan, the name of this star cluster is Subaru, and that's where they got the design of their logo. So I'll also turn on the art for these constellations. We can see Orion facing off against Taurus, Canis Major chasing after Lepus, and Canis Minor hanging out with the Gemini twins. So thank you for joining me in looking at the constellations of the February night sky, and happy Valentine's Day from the MSUM Planetarium.